Today marks 25 weeks or four months since I had my hysterectomy surgery. I wanted to provide an update for you really because a lot of questions have been um, been left on my first video that I had posted, the surgery must-haves, and then I went into the story. So either that video is being pushed out more by YouTube or perhaps all these surgeons now are booking you right now for your surgery. I happened to come across my uh, hospital ultrasound here when I was first pregnant. And I remember I mentioned in my first video how my uterus um, had, you know, the fibroid inside. And that was the first time I had heard about the fibroid, okay? And my doctor at the time, you know, it wasn't concerned. It wasn't anything that was, you know, alarming to her. And she did see in the ultrasound that my son was like playing with it. It was like one above his head. But when I, I looked at the actual imaging results here, it states that my uterus contains three. I can, I'm going to butcher the, the word for it. Contains three, and I'll put the word for it right here. One is in the central uh, portion of the uterus, and it has the actual measurements. The other two are posterior and superior. The largest measuring a certain amount, and the smaller one measuring a small amount. Now, when I look at these sizes here, the measurements, I noticed based on my uh, scan from my gynecologist of last year, when she discovered, you know, the, uh, the fibroids, yes, there's three of them. And I can already tell those measurements match the one from the pregnancy report. So this is my tip, okay? Because I obviously can't go back in time. I should have, I should have looked at this and thought, okay, even though the doctor is telling me not to be concerned about it, I should have monitored it. I should have spoke up more about it, okay? Um, and that's just, I mean, there's no manual that says, oh, pregnancy, oh, fibroids, there's nothing, you know? We go into a lot of situations feeling that our medical professionals are gonna tell us and we automatically, it's just like, um, you know, just we're socially conditioned to accept what they say. This is our health and our body. So we need to take ownership of that and speak up. Now I did mention also in the first video that I think the year was 2015 when I had gone for, you know, my annual pap smear and they had saw you know, something at that time that would have been like, okay, you need to get this looked at. And again, that I completely have on me because I was supposed to take care of that. I was supposed to go get a, um, a biopsy done of it and everything. And I had a personal, personal matter in my own personal life that um, affected all that. So that's all on me. Okay, so next tip. So tip number two is really no matter what is going on, again, we need to focus on our health as well because the foundation is just going to fall. It's just going to fall if we're not paying attention to our own health, no matter what is going on also with us. So coulda, woulda, shoulda, but that is what happened. So on my notes here, there is one part here that I want to also make sure that you are aware of. If you take vitamins, you take any type of supplements, show the complete list. I took a photograph of it and have it on your medical record of what you take. And you show that to your doctor. In my case, I had three supplements. Someone always texts. Always texts when I'm uh, filming. Sorry about that. I had three supplements there in which my gynecologist was like, how long were you taking these? No, 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 stop taking those right now. And for one of them, she had told me that it feeds, the fibroids feed on that estrogen that is being released from it. Again, I'm not a medical professional, I'm not a doctor. I don't know any of this stuff, but yes, I've been taking, you know, 
a variety of supplements and had no idea in that case that, you know, it may have been, it may have feeding the fibroids. I had no idea. So that's, that'd be tip three, go show your doctor everything and make sure, you know, that you're not doing anything to help feed it and grow and grow and grow. Now I want to give you just that experience, like you're coming with me for both of those surgeries and we're just going to talk a little bit more in depth. And I want this to, maybe it will help pull, put you at ease and don't be so anxious and, and scared because I, you're going to hear me say this. If I can do it, believe me, if I can do it, you can do it too. You got this. My mom took me to both of my appointments. I, she's not gonna see this video, but I feel that if I could have had somebody else with me, I would have. <laughs> so switch my mom out. Um, and I would have preferred my sister there. Reason being is I am already nervous as it is. Okay, I'm already having all these thoughts going in my mind. I recommend not bringing somebody, you know, to take you to the hospital or whatever, that is scared of hospitals, scared of needles, um, scared of seeing blood, scared of seeing any of that. I didn't know that about my mom, to be honest. I didn't know anything about that until we got to the hospital. So... I'm just telling it like it is. That's how I felt, okay? Um, I'm the one being operated on. I'm the one being cut up. I don't need all that around me, okay? But in my mind, I just kept remembering these next things I'm going to tell you, and that helped. You know, kind of just, I was just most of the time kind of tuning my mom out, <laughs> so to speak. So um, just, I wrote down here as far as uh, distracting the brain. Okay, because I, I go in, um, you're going to see all the doctors, you're going to see all these nurses running around, you got to, you know, give your urine for a test, they, they're going to do a pregnancy test to make sure that you're not pregnant, although you, you know, you're not pregnant. Um, they're going to be giving you your hospital gown, they're going to be, um, you know, you're going to feel very exposed, um, they're going to be putting on... Um, Oh, I had, you know, the little, the little head garb, little shower cap on the head. Um, and that just kept telling me, oh my gosh, this is real. This is real. This is real. For me to distract my brain, I had um, a movie on my phone. Okay. And for me, it was, I, I had to have an action movie. I had to see something where I was seeing, you know, actors, you know, that I enjoy, but I mean, they're over there kicking butt. There, you know, I, I, had, I had Mission Impossible Fallout on my phone because I, I really like that. I like the female character in there that um, that works with Ethan Hunt. I, I can't think of her name for some reason. But, um, you know, girl is kicking butt. She's got her leg up and her little suit, her little pants suit, you know, kick it. I mean, that's what I needed to see. I needed to see these women out there. Look, okay, I can do anything. Whatever it is that would motivate you to kind of calm you down and for you to distract your brain and remember that when this is over and you heal and you see how your life is given back, that is the goal. That is the ticket, okay? So don't let the fear, the stress, the anxiety of the actual procedure itself stop you from getting the procedure. The next one is, of course, my heart started to really race, but then again, I started to remember the drug doctor. Okay, I, I say drug dealer, okay? And they laugh at the hospital, but they know what I mean. I said, where is he? Okay, the two nurses came, they put the, um, the um, what is it, the blood pressure thing on this arm? Because I got the IV in this arm, and I'm looking, and I remember saying, now wait a minute, I, I need to be asleep. <laughs> They're like, oh no, we have to have it on you to monitor you. So they they were about ready to push the bed. I said, no, where is my drug dealer? So he comes, he's walking, right? And they're like, oh yeah, you have a good one. I said, no, 
I, I need to have a really good drug doctor. So he came up and I told him, I said, I don't want to see, I don't want to see this. I don't want to see the bed going. I don't want to see the room because I was afraid I was going to freak out if I saw it. I basically, I said, put me to sleep, put me to sleep now. So he's right here on the left-hand side of me, clear as day, remember. And he was talking to me all the way. This is what he told me after. He's sticking the medicine in the IV. I wasn't even watching him. I didn't even see him do that. Oh, yeah, la, la, la. Let, me, let me get you a little medicine right now. I was like, I didn't really feel like, you know, loopy or anything. No sooner than he took that out, I was like, oh, I'm starting to feel good. Right. And I thought it was kind of just, you know, ooh, I'm just going to fall asleep. Right. I was waiting for that. So then they push the chair, uh, the chair, they start to push the bed. And, you know, my mom's saying goodbye. And then it's, it's on. It is on. OK, it goes down the hallway. And I'm saying to myself, I said I didn't I, I didn't want to see this. Now, I wear contacts. OK, so I'm not wearing my glasses, but I even though my vision is fuzzy, I can still obviously see right? There's a door, <laughs> all this stuff. I go into a room, the operating room, and all I remember is, you know, you get on your back. And I remember, I think there was another doctor in there or somebody was saying, like, talking to me, are you ready? La, 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 la. No one told me to count backwards, whatever. I, I remember I looked up, like, clear as day. I look up, there's this big silver dome with all these lights. That's all I remember. I was out. That's all I remember. You see, that's why I say, you're going to be asleep. You wake up and then it starts to go into the, um, you know, the healing phase. Okay. Now for me, mine didn't go as planned. Okay. So I wake up thinking they're out. Yay. La 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 la. And then I find out, no, they're still, they're still there. Okay, when I'm told, Stephanie, don't get mad. <laughs> I'm like half asleep, half waking up. It's like, oh God, what, what do you need to tell me? So um, obviously when the doctor went in, they looked different and much larger than as expected. And this is something that a specialist needs to see because mine looked well, one of the fibroids, the largest fibroid, looked not, it didn't look like how it should have looked. That was what was so alarming. So you back up, re recover for four weeks, and during that four weeks, you go to the specialists and, you, and we drill down. But they still, they do an, um, I almost said autopsy, biopsy of the uh, fibroids, but also the one that looked strange, abnormal to them. Luckily, it all came back. It was not cancerous. But my specialist is, um, it is the surgeon that specializes in cancer, okay, for uh, women and the, you know, reproductive and so forth. So that was my specialist. So during that four weeks, again, you're taking more, um, more tests, doing more blood work, all this stuff to get me ready for the surgery that is ultimately the surgery that I need, okay? Then it's looking at also my, like, my age, okay? I'm 45, I'm gonna be 46 next month. Yes, 46, June, crab. Um, I only have one son, okay? I, want, I wanted more children, you know? Just didn't, I didn't stay married, so that's just me. I wanted to be married again, to have more children didn't happen. So those are all going in my mind, okay? Granted, I wanted the uterus to die off on its own, go off on your own, do it naturally, but that's not what was planned for me, okay? So take it out. For my hospital, the instructions were, you know, three days prior, I'm doing the special soap to get the, the um, bacteria, everything off out of me. The, the night prior, I'm doing the um, drinking mix thing uh, to drink this a huge amount of the Gatorade and the lax, lact, lax, laxative. I know I'm going to pronounce that right. 
to get all the poop, everything out of me. Did I say I'm going to be going into a little bit too, uh, too much information? I apologize. We haven't gotten to the really don't watch this with your kids part. So I apologize. I'm saying it now. You got to you got to get everything out of your your intestines, your, your bowels. So be prepared the night before the day before you are going to be pooping all damn day. Well, for me, I started at maybe about three, four o'clock and it's based on your surgery time. So my surgery kept being moved up. I'm like, how early you, you want to do it at 2 AM? Dang. <laughs> No, I think my surgery time was scheduled for, I think, I want to say six, or maybe it was five. We had to leave the house like by four o'clock in the morning, okay? So it's based on that time. So I was on that toilet. I never went through so much toilet paper in my life, but you have to do what you got to do. So when the drink, the drink is done, finish the drink, I would say good two hours after that is when I was like, okay, everything's out. And you'll know everything's out because you just, you just can't poop anymore. And I mean, your butt is hurting. It will come out. You don't have to push, but I mean, your booty is hurting. Okay. So that's the night before. So we get to the hospital and this was whew, night and day, this hospital, night and day. It was so darn organized. Not that the first one wasn't, but I could tell the level was way different. So I said, oh, I'm in very good hands. Uh, my mom did, couldn't go in the back with me, which I was kind of happy with. Because again, I didn't want to hear it. You know, she's making me feel worse. Like, she, she's not doing it on purpose. I'm just reacting that way is what I'm talking about. Um, so I'm back there by myself. I'm getting undressed. I'm putting back on the hospital garb and everything. And I remember I did take like a video shot to try to show, you know, the little fake belly my pregnancy belly to say, this is it. This is it. This hospital, I felt I was waiting a lot more, but there's like a, a lot, like I think maybe three of us, there's more, there's a lot more people there in the morning, which another thing I'm like, oh, y'all ready to operate at five o'clock or something in the morning. But there was just doctor after doctor. There seemed to be a doctor for everything. A nurse for everything. That's also what I noticed too. I'm just like, again, night and day. So I started to feel a lot more comfortable based on that. Okay. And again, once the IV went into my correct hand too, instead of being all up here in my elbow, that, that was good because it started to relax me. The operating nurse came in. Okay. And oh my gosh, she was just a ball of energy. She was just, I really liked her, her personality. And so she was talking to me and, and she was like rubbing my arm. She's like, you're going to be okay. And she was talking to my mom. That was something I, I needed her. <laughs> she, she was great. And then not one, but two, the drug dealer came in and then right behind him was number two. I said, and I just said it out. I said, I, I don't get one, but two drug dealers. <laughs> and the doctor, he's like, he goes, I've never been called a drug dealer. <laughs> took my glasses off again. I went to the bathroom. Um, I didn't have to poop, to be honest. It was just pee coming out. Um, and then got me my time to wheel me off. This room was, we're talking, it looked like something out of Tony Stark. Okay, like Tony Stark, I expected to see him come around the corner. The machines and... I mean, I was, again, that made me feel a lot more comfortable. I said, I, I am in good hands. The nurse, um, I remember she had like the, uh, the, the, the mask that goes up to the nose. You know, they started to do that too. She said, you know, it's the oxygen. It's probably also the medicine too. I don't know. Um, because yeah, the, my, I had one, one the, the drug doctor right here. The other one was right here. Okay. Both two on one side. Okay, had the little blood pressure and I'm on my back, but I can kind of still see. And then the door opens up and I saw scrubs. So I see the surgeons coming up. So I think there was probably about maybe three of us in the room. And then I heard like some soft music turn on, you know, they have their little music going on, you know, when they're operating, we're, we're, we're being put under. And then um, my doctor, my surgeon, he's like above me and he's like, are you ready? 
<laughs> and I told him, I said, when I wake up, it better be out of me. <laughs> and he said, it will. And I did remind him, I said, and don't forget to take pictures. So again, they can take pictures. You want to see it. Take, ask them to take photos. You got to ask them. So she, the nurse came and she put that the mask thing back on my nose. Now this time she was pressing a little too hard. She was pressing hard. And I remember I lifted my right arm up, my right hand up against her arm to like push her away. Cause I'm like, girl, you're trying to suffocate me. That's what I'm thinking in my head. I remember all I remember doing is pushing her. And then she's pressing further down on my nose. I was out, out. Wake up and I'm in their actual recovery rooms in a bed. So you go there and the nurse is in the corner doing her little business, doing her little charts. And she's like, oh, hi. And um, she's like, you did great. Everything went fine. I said, it's out. She goes, yeah, it's out. <laughs> That's all I wanted to hear. And then they take me um, to um, my actual room. Okay. And then, then it starts. You know, again, the tests, the vitals. I understand the vitals, but by then I was so tired of seeing these darn needles. I mean, every time I turned around, it seemed like every four hours or so, or maybe it was less, someone was coming in to take blood. And one time I was eating, I don't remember what it was, breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And I look up and I see her in her little coat I didn't know I made a face, but she's like, oh, you're not happy to see me. <laughs> I'm like, another, you need more blood out of me? Like, seriously. I did spend Thanksgiving in there. I was watching, um, you know, the TV was about on the ceiling, which was really an awkward position to watch, but they had Jurassic, they had all these Jurassic Park movies on for Thanksgiving. I was watching Jurassic World again. I was... I was in heaven. I was having Thanksgiving dinner in there. They, they had turkey, they had everything in there. So I didn't feel like left out. Didn't have to cook, of course. Um, and at the room service, you call for your little meals and stuff. So that was it. During this whole resting in the hospital period, what I can tell you is this. Do not feel guilty about taking that extra time for yourself. If you feel like, look, I don't, I don't want, I don't want my vitals taken. And this is me. Let me backtrack. This is me. Cause I was just tired of it. It felt like I was, even when I was do uh, dozing off and stuff, I would kind of feel like, is it every hour they're coming in here trying to do blood pressure and all this stuff? That's just me. So I was, I remember one time I was dozing off and they still doing my vitals and she's all still trying to take blood. And I'm just like, I'm about to fall asleep. So I do not feel the least bit guilty for doing this. There were two occasions where I pretended to be asleep. I could hear them coming and I pretended to be asleep. I had it. I don't want no more blood drawn and I, I, no vitals. I'm not, I'm not dying. I, I just, I'm, I'm tired. Okay. So Maybe I shouldn't be telling you this, but you take it, take it with a grain of salt. I'm not here. I'm not, I'm not trying to feel guilty. Okay. I've went through this now two times. So if I'm tired of seeing you, I'm tired of seeing you. <laughs> so I did pretend to be asleep, but then I knew that they were going to come back, you know, in the next 30 minutes or an hour anyway. And like clockwork, they were there to take my vitals again. So that's what I did. Drink water. You need to drink your water, especially if you're going to have a cath catheter. I think that's what it's called. That's, you know, your first, first day or two. That's how you're peeing. Okay. And until that's coming out with no blood in it, that that's going to stay stuck up in there. And it's weird feeling to me too, because I feel like I want to take it out. Right. Cause I'm just like, I got to get up and pee. Oh, wait a minute. Ugh, it's this. I, and then I had to stop myself. I'm like, girl, don't be trying to take this out. Okay. But that's how you're going to there's certain uh, goals you need to accomplish. You need to make sure that you pass gas, you fart. Uh, some doctors are going to require you to have bowel movement. I didn't know. And they understood that, but I could not get discharged until I passed gas. Poop was just optional. 
um, burping too. And I had to get up and walk. So if I could not make my walking goals with the OT doctor, the, you know, um, occupational therapist came in, he had me walking. I even had to go up a flight of stairs and down. If I could not do certain stuff, they weren't going to let me go. And I wanted to go home. After Thanksgiving, I wanted to go home. But there's certain goals. So again, every hospital is different. Everybody's different. But there are things that you need to show before you could leave. So those were those those for myself. And then, yes, when I got home, it was great because you know, I want my own bed. I, I want my own home. And again, at home, you need to do your goals as well. You cannot be lifting anything more that, let me, what did I write down? Yeah, you can't, I could not lift anything that was heavier than a gallon of water, okay? Or a gallon of milk even. I don't have no little ones running around, you know, so I have help. I had my mom here to help to take care of me. I have help. However, if you don't, you talk to your, the, the hospital, you talk to them to see on your surgery. They can have a nurse come out and help you. Okay. You can get help. Okay. So make sure you speak up and you ask. Okay. So that way you're not. You don't want to be picking up stuff, even if you've got little babies or something, and risk the injury, your cut opening up nothing, okay? Also about your incision, leave it alone. Leave it alone. When you take your shower, just let everything rinse down. Leave it alone. Don't put anything on it. Don't put any oils, bio oil, lotions, nothing on the incision. I still don't put anything on it for at least six months. And that was based on my surgery. So that's what my surgeon has said. You want it to heal in a thin as possible line and don't put anything on it, okay? You run the risk of a keloid and all that stuff. Now, especially with um, black women, keloid is more, you know, we're more prone to that. For me, and again, I didn't know any of this. Mine, for my first surgery, my, um, cut was a lot more, um, just like the thin line. It didn't keloid, but the second one, and I can, I can kind of understand it's like, you're, you're cutting in the same damn cut. <laughs> you're cutting in the same area. It did go over. So the skin did raise, not from like some photos I've seen where it looks serious. It did, you know, go up some, and I have just some of the collagen going over. So I wish it did, you know, not have that. But it is what it is. So nothing I can do. Now we're going to go into the part, you know, if you don't want, you got the kids around, get, get them out the room. You are going to have a, I think it's about either a one or two weeks. I, I can't recall. Um, you come back to your surgeon's office. They take the uh, staples out. Okay. Then you're going to have, I think, I think it was either one or two weeks. Yeah. And then you're going to have a four week checkup. Okay, just to make sure everything's going well. And then you're going to have a six-week checkup, okay? That that was mine. So I just anticipate that's pretty standard. Now, at any of those appointments, if you want to talk about your own personal life, whether you're sexually active or not sexually active, or you want to talk about, um, for myself, just from stuff from Googling, of course, uh, the vaginal tunnel and stuff, you, these are questions you need to ask, okay? And for myself, you know, um, once I'm 100%, you know, I mean, I'm single. I'm looking to mingle. I'm trying to find, I'm out here trying to find me a relationship, okay? And it's hard. We, we ain't going that'll be for another story time. So, of course, I'm asking about um, those things that I'm noticing and, and getting a little scared from, from reading about. And they're used to people Googling and, and pretending to be the doctors. So these aren't questions that are going to be, you know, seem odd to your doctor. So speak up. But these were the two questions I asked. So if you were thinking about it, here you go. Um, you are not going to be having sex for a while. Okay. I'm not sexually active. Okay. But at least I wanted to know how long. Okay. Okay. Some doctors can say four weeks. I, I heard some doctors saying eight weeks. My doctor said if you are going to be sexually active, eight weeks. 
Okay. So again, everybody's different. I would advise as long as possible. Okay. And what's comfortable for you because it's your body. It's your body. Now, vaginal tunnel. And this is very important. There's the rumors are going around that our vaginal tunnel after hysterectomy is going to be shortened. Okay. Because obviously they took this out. Um, my uterus and obviously the fibroids and my cervix are gone. The only thing is my ovaries there. Okay. So I am not in any minute menopause. So how it was explained to me about our vaginal tunnel. And let me go back. So the vaginal tunnel is, you know, obviously when the penis goes in and that like allegedly it's not feeling the same way. Like here's the tunnel. Here's my arm. Here's the tunnel. <laughs> okay. And it's allegedly now shortened. So the penis don't have as much length for it to go do its little business. Okay. So it's, it's allegedly going to feel different for him and different for you. Oh no, no contraire. It was, this is how it was explained to me. The tunnel is the same length. Everything is the same. So my surgeon said, think of it like um, a sock. Like you have a sock on your, your foot. So let's just say this is my, my foot and I got, these are my toes. These are my toes, okay? They're doing everything up here and this is all tied up. You know, this is all done. The tunnel is not touched at all. Okay, so there's nothing to worry about. The tunnel is the same length it always has been, okay? Nothing with this surgery will change the length of the vaginal tunnel, okay? That's explained to me. But again, if you want to clarify with your doctor, go right ahead. We're going to close it out with exercising, okay? Because that's important to me. So now that they're out, you know, I call them Cornish hands because they did look like Cornish hands to me. Everything's out, right? When can I do my, my core workout? When can I do my planks? When, when can I can get back into that? So my doctor said, my surgeon said, based on my medical history, okay, so it's going to be different with everybody, eight to 10 weeks. So in my mind, I'm thinking I'm going to do the end part. I'm going to do 10 weeks, which just happened to fall February 1st. And even though I could go in and do core workouts and add that, I am going to spend all of February doing light workouts, like walking exercises. Because to me, I needed to build up. And there's a reason why I felt that I needed to build up the exercise because the woman, the channel that I was watching and working out to the last year, 2021, I had to build myself up to do her workouts. Okay. I call her the chiseler. So I already knew, you know what, you need to build up before you hit Joanna. And to me, I thought I would start Joanna's strength workouts. That's her name, Joanna. Um, oh, she's fabulous. In June. So to me, from February until June 1st, work on building up. Because once you get to the chiseler, I'm telling you, you just cannot just dive in. Because the girl is working your butt. Okay, she's that good. All of February, I looked up light workouts walking workouts, just low impact, um, not too much on the core. It was just to get me used to walking around and getting back active. That's what I spent all of February to, to, of doing. When March came, that's when I added in, I, I went up the next level. I went up to um, the first uh, workout channel I first discovered, um, I think it was maybe late 2020, yeah, it was because it was, no, it was during COVID. I, I found her and she had a lot of uh, workouts at home because everything was shut down. So I started, I went to her channel because I knew hers, hers kind of just gradually builds you up too, but they're a lot more effective than just doing those low impact workouts. So I started with her in March, but then I started to add in um, maybe something that was just a little bit, I would say stronger but not too strong. You see what I mean? I could tell. You can just tell when your stomach is like, okay, cut it out, you know? That's what I would do. So I did. I started to do her. Um, her name is Lucy. 
I was in March. Okay, so here's March. And in mid-March, I came across this uh, channel called Burpee Girl. Girl, I'm so happy I found her. I just knew by her name alone, Burpee Girl. I was like, oh, I was going to like her because I actually like burpees. I do. I think she posts every day. So she has a combination of different workouts. They're fun. But then there's some that are like, are you kidding me? <laughs> right? So I said, those workouts, are you kidding me? Workouts will be, but let's get through April. <laughs> let's get through, um, yeah, April. Let's get the rest of April. And then I'll start to kind of look at a little bit more of her. So I would add one Lucy workout and then one Burpee Girl workout. And I kind of combine them so I have an hour workout. Again, just working myself up. But this is what really helped me build back up my strength, just using my own body weight. After I make my bed in the morning, I do a one minute plank. Because I knew that the plank would help not only my core, it's just all over, you know, full body. One minute, okay? I got my little Apple Watch, I go Siri, timer for one minute, countdown, it's on, okay? You want to talk about the first week, I, can't, I, I had to put my knees down. I couldn't, I could not get through. Uh, of course I couldn't, right? I haven't done that before. But I pushed. Because let me tell you something, it takes only 21 days, 22 days to form a habit. And you got to have that mindset that you can do it. I said, I know. Watch. I know I'm going to get through a full one minute. You know, still in that perfect pose. Then I started to see, okay, instead of wanting to stop at 40 seconds, 35 seconds, it was longer. That's how I knew I was building up my strength. Okay. Now, to this day, I'll try to remember to put the dates in like when, when I could do it. Because I know I wrote it on my calendar when I could do it without in a perfect plank pose for a full minute. Just to see, just to see those results. That's when I say, oh, I know I can do this. So now I do the one minute plank, it's, I, I'm fine, right? And my, my legs start going more and more. And then I can see, I start shaking and stuff because I'm not, I'm not used to it. So that I'm still in that one minute legs now and we're talking perfect pose until June. And then I will go beyond one minute. I'll go like a minute and I'll try a minute and 20 seconds or a minute and 30 seconds and let's build it up. Let's build it up like that. Just to see. After I do the one minute plank, so this is again every morning, I do 10 push ups. I can only do three. <laughs> then I have to stop, take a break. Now I can do a full 10. And then I do a full 10, and then I have my elbows closer to me to work the triceps. And then I do, I could only do three, and now I can do five. So it's just gradually building yourself up. Oh, and the push ups, let me tell you something too, what the push ups are doing. You want your you want your chest to be looking like you went up a full cup size. I'm like, where have you been? You've been down downtown or something. All of a sudden, shoot, they up here. <laughs> muscle building, muscle building underneath there. <laughs> they go right up, right up. So it has spurt. I am taking all of this year, 2022, and it's me. I'm focusing on me. Okay, I ain't out here running the streets. I ain't here trying to be dating everybody. I'm not gonna know. This is about me. I'm spending this year working on mind, body, and spirit. I got my life back. And I'm just going full steam ahead. Okay? And I love it. So in closing, if you are putting it off, if you are frightened, if you do not think that you can do this, you can you can. I have faith in you. You can do it. And I love hearing your comments. I love hearing your comments about what you're going through and your apprehension, whatever it is. You're not bothering me by reaching out. I want to know and share my experience and any offer of support or, or you know, positivity that I can bring to you. But know that I am sending you virtual hugs, uh, positivity, support, most of all, again, you can do it. So everyone, thank you for stopping by and watching. I really do appreciate it. I hope anything in this video has given you 
what you needed. A wonderful day, wonderful evening, and I'm going to see you very soon in the next video. Take care.